Welcome, I'm Phyllis Meyer, a volunteer here at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. Thank you for joining me as I spotlight a lovely painting by Pier Mario D'Amelia, The Annunciation, made in 1497 at the height of the Italian Renaissance. This horizontal tempera on panel hangs in the Raphael room on the second floor of the museum. The panel is approximately 40 inches high and 45 inches wide and depicts the Archangel Gabriel speaking to the Virgin Mary, while both kneel facing each other in a wide palatial arcade. These two central figures are very close in the foreground, so we feel as though we are there with them to witness the event that is unfolding. According to Christian theology, this is the moment the Archangel tells Mary that she will conceive a child through the power of the Holy Spirit and will become the mother of God. The angel kneels in profile with one foot on the floor, the other tucked behind him. He has light skin, curly light brown hair, and a halo over his head. He wears a long-sleeved blue and beige tunic over a dark rose skirt, and his large wings are dark blue highlighted with a subtle dusty rose. In his left hand, the archangel holds a long stem of white lilies that seems to connect him to Mary, as the lilies arch over toward her while she kneels opposite him. Mary wears a dark blue velvety robe with gold brocade trim. The robe falls in graceful folds over her ruby red dress. She wears a white veil that covers her hair and drapes over her shoulders. She too has a halo. Mary looks down at a small open red book in her left hand, perhaps the Book of Hours, then a popular prayer book for the laity. Why does Mary look down and not at the angel? Mary is likely trying to understand what she's just been told, while the angel Gabriel tries to explain this miracle to her. He points up with his right index finger toward a white, almost translucent dove flying above them. The dove, a symbol of the Holy Spirit, leaves a trail of gold dust in its path. The gold dust represents the power of the Holy Spirit that will come down to Mary and cause her to become with child. Behind the two central figures, a hallway leads back to a low-walled courtyard. The courtyard ends with a tall main doorway in a brick high wall that leads to the outside world. A small tree is centered just past the doorway and beyond it, the blue sky, a river, mountains, and other trees appear in the far, far distance. During the Renaissance, the setting of Mary's house becomes more elaborate as compared to the humble home in which Mary probably had lived and where earlier versions of the biblical event place her. Here, the Grand Arcade reflects Renaissance architectural taste, including many white painted arches and Corinthian marble columns with gold capitals. The flooring of the arcade and the hallway also reflects Renaissance taste. White parallel lines of tiles, horizontal and vertical, dominate a background of black, gray, and white geometric pattern. Showing off his technical skill in perspective, the artist shows us two vertical lines of white tile that begin between the kneeling figures and converge as they go down the hallway. This technique, called one-point perspective, creates the appearance of a dramatic distance to the courtyard and the world beyond. The mood of the painting is calm, serene, no ruffled feathers here. The colors in the painting are peaceful too, ethereal, rich, but soft, because the artist uses tempera, egg-based paint, which lacks the gloss of oils. The painting's elaborate frame looks like a piece of architecture, flaunting faux marble columns on each vertical side of the frame, and a predella with tiny paintings at the bottom. A predella is a painting or sculpture at the base of a work, usually a polytic or multi-panel piece, which the Annunciation may or may not be. An elegant large cornice like a roof crowns the top of the frame of this magnificent piece, which served as the altarpiece for the high altar of the Franciscan church in the town of Amelia in Umbria. For decades after Mrs. Gardner purchased and hung the painting, the artist was named the Master of the Gardner Annunciation. It took 400 plus years after its making for art historians to attribute the work definitively to Pier Mario D'Amelia, now recognized as the maker of what some consider to be the loveliest painting in our collection.